Oh, it's been a long time coming for this bad boy behind me, but is it just another pretty face or was it worth the wait? Let's dive in and check it out. Let's welcome the new generation Lexus GX. It only took nearly 15 years, but the third best-selling SUV in the Lexus lineup now enters its third generation and has been revamped from the ground up with a big off-road focus. Made on the Lexus GAF platform that's shared with the current generation LX600, this body-on-frame SUV has a strong and lightweight architecture making the GX more rigid, which is great for improved on-road handling and withstanding off-road obstacles. On top of that frame is a good-looking machine with a bold and boxier silhouette than the previous gen. It's 5 inches longer, 3.8 inches wider, 1.4 inches taller, has a 2.4 inch longer wheelbase, and over 8.5 inches of ground clearance. Lexus made it a point to provide optimal spatial awareness for the driver so the hood has been carved out in the middle for better visibility, the base of the A-pillars have been pushed back for a more upright windshield, the driver's side belt line has been lowered, and even the side view mirrors are now vertically oriented for a better off-road field of view giving the GX that old school FJ look. With standard tri-beam LED headlights and high-mounted LED light blade in the rear, this new generation GX is a modern take on the Lexus Icon. And if you care, the drag coefficient is 0.39. <laughs> okay, unpopular opinion. I was a big fan of the huge, obnoxious spindle grills on the previous generation. Can we get a shot of that in here somewhere? All right, that's enough. Let's talk about this new front end on this GX because I think it looks nice and classy. An integrated spindle design looks great and it's still functional. You still get cooling up top and on the sides. They raised it a bit so you don't get vegetation caught in here, but I think it looks damn good. The GX will come in three available trims, premium, luxury, and the new off-road oriented Overtrail. The previous gen's naturally aspirated V8 has been ditched in favor of a standard high output 3.4 liter twin turbo V6, pushing out 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. This is linked to a 10-speed automatic transmission sending power to all four wheels via full-time four-wheel drive. All models will have a two-speed transfer case and a Torsen limited slip center differential with the locking feature, which we'll get to later. There was talk of a possible hybrid variant coming into the future, but Lexus wouldn't give up the deets to any of that info. So right now I'm driving the GX550, the base model, which is pretty much the premium. And I gotta say, right off the bat, power delivery feels nice. It does get that power bump and that torque bump. Yeah, I'm gonna miss the naturally aspirated sound of the V8, but this twin turbo V6, it provides some good power. Not in love with the noise. I mean, I know a lot of people won't be. They're gonna miss that nice, delicious V8 sound. But for the power, I think it's a decent trade-off. And shifting feels nice and smooth and quick. You can barely notice it. And let's see, going around this curve. Yeah, feels great. Now, braking going into this curve, I gotta say the braking feels substantially better. On the previous generation, there was a lot of travel on the brake pedal, but this one feels a lot more refined and I feel a lot more confident braking this big thing. The steering feel is precise. I like how direct it is. It's not a lot of vagueness and it's really stable on center. I found in the previous generation, I would have to make a lot of micro adjustments when just driving in a straight line, but the steering in this new generation, it feels good. If you're looking to sprint to your destination with haste, the GX can get from zero to 60 in around 6.5 seconds, which is more than a second faster than the outgoing model and has a top speed of 109 miles per hour. There's different drive modes that switch up the firmness of the suspension, steering feel, and throttle response. And in addition to more performance, it's also slightly more efficient getting an EPA estimated 17 miles per gallon in combined driving. If you're interested in towing, you'll be happy to know that the GX can now tow up to 9,000 pounds when properly equipped. Yeah, this is body on frame, so there is gonna be a bit of body roll when it comes to going down some windy roads. Yeah, you're gonna feel it shifting to the left or the right. So up here, let's test out the turning circle, making this U-turn. And will it make it? Will it make it? All right. Turning circle is pretty tight. I appreciate that. 
Using that GAF platform allows the GX to be 20% more rigid. Not much vibration enters the cabin and the new GX feels like it performs better when cornering. Adding to its improved driving dynamics are a high-mounted double wishbone front suspension and a multi-link rear suspension with a larger axle housing cross-section which increases axle strength, allowing the GX to equip larger wheels. While driving, the cabin is relatively quiet, which is great because on nice long commutes, you want a serene ambiance. And these seats are nice and comfortable. Lexus does a great job with their seats. Let's see if some engine noise gets pumped in from this twin turbo V6 off the line from a start. And doesn't sound like it, but still doesn't sound like a V8. And while driving, looking out, I mean, visibility looks great. You have a nice elevated view of the road and this hood is carved out in the middle. So you have even greater visibility. One fun, weird note is for this generation GX, the turn signal stock. On the previous gen, you would hit it down halfway. It wouldn't do the three clicks. Now on this one, you don't have to worry about that. I know it was bugging a few people, but yeah. The new GX takes care of you. Oh, and you get paddle shifters. Oh, how fun. If you're inclined not to use your signals like a naughty person, you're covered with the standard Lexus Safety System 3.0, which includes blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, and all speed dynamic radar cruise control. With all of the improvements to the GX, from the looks, to the extra power, to even the safety features, it all culminates into a great driving luxury SUV. But let's see how it goes off-road. Lexus now adds the first ever overtrail model to the GX lineup. This off-road focused trim takes away the third row, making it a five-seater, but adds goodies to create one formidable SUV. Let's see, it includes 33-inch all-terrain tires with exclusive 18-inch wheels, higher roof rails, black wheel arch moldings, 10mm wider track, raised bottom corners of front and rear bumpers, adaptive variable suspension, electronic rear locking differential, and now electronic KDSS, which is Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System, and this allows up to 25 inches of wheel articulation with faster operation. So right now I'm off-roading in the Overtrail trim and this is one capable machine. Right here, it looks like an elephant has stepped in the trail and we're getting some tilt, but I mean, it's going through it effortlessly. Right now I'm in four high. I'm gonna throw this into neutral and then we're gonna dial it down to four low. You push it in, dial it back. You wait for the system to do its thing. It notifies you on the digital dash and you throw it back in the drive and you keep on going. For the low range, I get an MTS select, which is the multi-terrain select and a crawl mode. But right now I'm in automatic, which is doing all the work for me. So we're, going, we're tilting pretty aggressively and you can see how much you're tilting on this multi-terrain monitor. You get to see how much work you're doing. And with this monitor, you can also change the view. You can see what's under the car and you can also see what's through the hood. The Overtrail also gets better measurements for off-roading than the other trims with a 26 degree approach, 23 degree breakover and 21 degree departure angle and 8.9 inches of ground clearance. If you find yourself sending it a little too hard on the trails, an easily removable silver piece on the front bumper allows for simple replacement and potential customization. So on this small twisty bit, let's activate crawl mode. And it's really intuitive. You press the button here and you can select your speed on this dial. Right now, going about two miles an hour. And you can speed it up or slow it down depending on your comfort level. But for right now, let's turn this guy off and let's just keep going on the trail. There's no problem. Nothing's getting snagged. If you do want to go on some adventures, <laughs> and bring along five extra people because the Overtrail is only a five-seater. Mm, this isn't a bad option. I definitely meant four passengers, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> In addition to pleasant on and off-road manners, the GX is also comfortable to occupy. Premium materials line the cabin and seating is comfortable, but how well does it accommodate taller drivers? 
I'm glad that Lexus decided to keep conventional door handles instead of the electronic poppers for this new GX. And keep in mind, step in is kind of high, so you do have a grab handle right here and some standard step rails. But once you get in, it's nice and comfortable. I'm 6'4 and I fit just fine. Loads of leg room and head room. Seats are highly adjustable with some good lumbar support. And the steering wheel feels good as well and electronically adjustable too. And you get some nice soft materials everywhere in the cabin. You have a leg cushion right here on the side of the center stack and some nice soft armrests as well. Driver's position is a great place to be. While the standard seating is comfy, it is worth noting that the seats in the Overtrail model driven earlier have a different foam material than the other trims, and that's to allow the occupants to sink into the seat for maximum comfort when off-roading and minimizes jostling around. If you're seated in the second row, you won't have a problem getting comfortable because there's a lot of room back here. I'm seated behind my ideal seating position and my feet fit under the seat. I still have leg room and I have some great headroom and your air vents are right here. But if you're in the middle seat, yeah, you're hiked up just a little bit and you have the transmission tunnel to deal with, but the second row is really comfortable and the seats also recline so you could get in a really comfortable position. One small observation with the second row in the overtrail trim is the placement of the rear vents, which is on the back of the center console rather than above the second row passengers. Not sure if that matters, but what does is the additional space in the cargo area without that third row. In the overtrail, there's 45.6 cubic feet of room behind the second row and 90.5 cubic feet with the second row folded. In other trims, there's a tight 10.3 cubic feet behind the third row, 40.2 cubic feet with the third row folded, and 76.9 cubic feet with both second and third rows folded. So yeah, Lexus got rid of the barn doors from the last generation. Can we insert a shot of my profound sadness opening that last generation? Oh, I'm gonna miss that. Yeah, and they replaced it with this because they figured they want people to have some coverage when they're overlanding in their luxury three row or two row SUV. And one key hidden gem that they've kept, which I'm really happy about is this, a pop-up glass. So you can just throw in all of your stuff or take it out or whatever you want to do. Glad they kept it. A second row split bench seat comes standard for a seven passenger seating configuration. And that second row can tumble forward, allowing easy access into the third row. But make sure you pull out the third row's bottom portion of the seats before you sit down. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not even gonna try to fit in this third row because this is made for kids or naughty mother-in-laws. I'm just kidding. Sorry, GG. The cabin of the GX is finally up to date. The instrument panel is horizontally oriented, which is a Lexus first, and this not only creates a clean look, but also gives the driver a sense of vehicle posture when the GX tilts when off-roading. A 12.3-inch digital driver display comes standard, and so does this 14-inch infotainment touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Some climate controls are embedded into the screen, but they're simple to figure out. What's not simple to figure out is why wireless charging doesn't come standard. The interior of the GX is up to modern spec by Lexus standards. It's a great fit and finish with quality materials throughout. And this is the base trim. So this still looks and feels great. You have your large screens that are easy to operate, especially this touch screen, which is nice and snappy and clear. And you also get some good storage for your phone, some really deep cup holders for some water or big, huge Stanley cups, and some decent storage in your center console. All of the buttons are laid out in a really intuitive design, and this is a nice, easy cabin to operate. Pricing for a base GX550, which is the premium trim, starts at $65,600, which includes the destination charge. And with that, you get features like 20 inch wheels, power folding mirrors, power rear door, seating for seven, new Lux trimmed interior, heated and ventilated front seats, six USB-C ports, 120 volt power outlet in the cargo area, moonroof, and 10 speaker audio system. If you're looking to get a luxury off-road experience, the Overtrail starts at $70,600.
This will include all of its off-road goodies mentioned earlier, plus available two-tone paint options, headlamp washers, fog lights, four USB-C ports, olive-colored trimmed interior, heated steering wheel, and the ability to eliminate the moonroof if you plan on modifying up top. But if you're looking to ride in lavishness, the luxury trim starts at $78,600 and this gets you features like 22-inch wheels, available adaptive variable suspension, power extending running boards, leather trimmed interior with massaging front seats, memory seat settings, second row sunshades, wireless charging, and the available dynamic sky panorama glass roof. Throughout the lineup, each trim has its own plus model that offers additional features and there's also various standalone options or packages which adds things like different wheels, head-up display, Mark Levinson 21 speaker sound system, and a cool box inside the center console. If you're looking to upgrade your sedan or even your current SUV and trade it in to get the new GX, go on KBB.com and get your car's value to put it towards this or maybe one of the competitors. KBB.com, click the link above for more details. The GX is looking to take on other luxury SUVs in the segment, which include the BMW X5 and X7, Mercedes-Benz GLE, and especially the Land Rover Defender 110. One key feature that the GX has apart from the unibody competitors is its body-on-frame construction, which makes it a much more capable option when it comes to adventure time. They'll be built in the Tahara plant in Japan, and production will start in the first quarter of 2024. It looks like this new generation of GX has made vast improvements from its interior, powertrain, and its looks. So if you wanna get off the beaten path in style, go check one out for yourself. Now, excuse me, I gotta ward off these Arizona animals that are distracting me. I'm not kidding. Look at these things. Look at them. Look at them go. Look, he's in the road. Get out of the road, crazy.